Kaysberg, and on behalf of the Board of Directors of Benjamin Rose Institute, I would love to welcome you all and thank you to all of you who've been here all day and are staying. Um, we're very excited about this program today, and without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Rich Brody, our president, to introduce our speaker. Thank you. Um, it's my great personal pleasure to introduce our speaker today. Uh, because uh, uh, I think of Bob as an old friend. Um, uh, Bob is the president of Matz Blancato and Associates. Uh, it's a firm that uh, provides uh, strategic consulting, uh, government affairs representation. Um, it's a real personal pleasure to have Bob join us here in Cleveland. Many of you know him, uh, but we are, have a chance to hear about this really important topic and a seminal event, I think, I hope, uh, in the progress of elder, uh, fighting elder justice issues in the United States. Well, we are here to talk about an important legislative victory, the passage of the Elder Justice Act. But I'm going to begin with a thank you, because there are advocates in this room who worked with us to achieve this remarkable effort. And everywhere I've been able to go since the passage of this bill, I start by saying thank you, because this was a national advocacy effort. And it was done very well here in Cleveland as well. And it was six months ago today, I'm sure that if you picked up the paper or watched the news, you know this is six month anniversary of the uh, signing of the law of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. And the Elder Justice Act within that bill qualifies as a new piece of social change legislation intended to help ensure a basic human right of an older person by preventing and prosecuting elder abuse. In the legislation, the term elder justice means, from a societal perspective, efforts to prevent, detect, treat, intervene in, and prosecute elder abuse, neglect, and exploitation, and protect elders with diminished capacity while maximizing their autonomy. And from an individual perspective, the recognition of an elder's rights, including the right to be free from abuse, neglect, and exploitation. It is about elder justice, pure and simple. The term was used for a reason. Why did it get done? Okay. First of all, the problem got worse in those seven years. Okay. The statistics that Georgia gave you, 11% of people 60 and over who are for, suffer from some form of elder abuse in this country, according to the National Institute of Justice. The Senate Aging Committee estimating 5 million cases of elder abuse in this country. The $2.6 billion lost by victims of financial abuse that was came out of that MetLife and National Committee report. In 2005, people 65 and over in this country lost more than $1.3 billion in personal and property crimes. Those people 60 and over in this country lose more in dollar cents than any other age group in the growing area of internet fraud. The National Center on Elder Abuse says one to two million people are exploited or mistreated by someone they depend on for care. And then you pick up the news stories every day. Okay? So as the problem got worse and more people found out about it, it became a basis for why this bill got passed. The solution, the Elder Justice Act, always was a bipartisan and a modest solution. We were not asking for the sun, the moon, and the stars. It's a modest bill taking a first important step forward, okay? And that was viewed eventually as being an important feature. Another reason why it got done is the role of champions. For those of you who do public policy work, if you don't have a champion fighting your cause, okay, introducing your bill, moving the bill through the process, you don't go anywhere. Third reason, consistent advocacy. You've heard the word advocacy a lot associated with this issue, for good reason. Yes, we have an elder justice coalition, and Rich, you're right. I'll tell you who from Ohio is in the coalition. The Association of Probate Judges, the Association, Ohio Association of Long-Term Care Ombudsmen, OCAPS, the Senior and Adult Services of Cuyahoga, did I say that right, County? Western Reserve Area Agency on Aging, 
Carol and Georgia and Rich are individual members. So we had a national network developed from an elder justice coalition who did constant work in Washington, in Columbus, across the country on behalf of this legislation. But here's what else happened. Within our framework of our coalition, we had two groups that, that came out very strong. One was the Older Women's League. Okay? What is elder abuse about? It's an older woman's issue. The average age of a victim of elder abuse is an older woman living alone between the age of 75 and 80. Our colleagues at the National Council on Aging, on whose board Rich serves, developed this new video advocacy campaign where you could walk into a congressional office and show a small video of an older person talking about the need to pass this bill. And it took away a lot of long meetings and stuff. They could come in with this very novel approach and it worked very effectively. So when our, when our group stepped up and enhanced our advocacy, combined with what we were doing, that helped get this bill done. A fourth reason why this bill got done, the role of the media. Now, this was not always the case. This was not always a topic that the media cared about or focused on. Then, the last reason why this bill passed, and again, this is an honesty lecture as much as it is a substance lecture, dumb luck. It's rewarding to have this issue seen as something to deal with versus denying its existence, as we found seven or eight years ago. It's rewarding to see people do advocacy for the first time ever. I get stories every day about somebody who never did this before in their lives, never contacted their congressperson or senator, never emailed, never wrote, never, they do it now. And they do it well. Makes you put tears in your eyes when you hear some of the stories about what they, what they did. It's rewarding for knowing who we're doing this advocacy for a victim of elder abuse, the older woman living alone between 75 and 80, the victim who loses his or her life savings to someone who exploits their vulnerability of living alone. It's rewarding because we're helping victims, but we're also helping to provide resources to those on the front line trying to reduce victimization, APS, ombudsman, law enforcement, aging network, social workers, etc. Because a victim of elder abuse is never the same. And that it should be our great motivator. But we have to finish our work. With elder justice, it is about the money. It would be the cruelest hoax possible not to have this funded after the work that went in to get the bill passed. And then we need to pass these other bills to make the commitment that, more, that much more comprehensive. So if we want to think about what lies ahead from the advocacy perspective, let me close with quotes from two distinct Americans who I think maybe said it best. One. There are risks and costs to a program of action, but they are far less than the long-range risks and costs of comfortable inaction. John Kennedy. Even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. Will Rogers. Thank you very much.